If you're a fan of Elon Musk and you're looking for ways to solve big problems, never give up and ignore the critics, then this video is for you. You decided to build a space company. Why on earth would someone do that? <laughs> Got that question a lot, that's true. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone on at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable. When so, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I want to see explode out into the world. I started the Mentor Me series to try to hang around people who've done a lot more than us, and by spending a little bit more time with them, hopefully some of their beliefs, their mindsets, their way of thinking, seeps into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today we're going to learn from one of the best, Elon Musk and his amazing journey. Mentor Me, Elon. T-minus 20 seconds. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. Flight computer has control of the vehicle. Do we see anything on the sensors? That's a problem. No, nothing. I'll say go for launch. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Coming in, yeah, it sounded yeah. like an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look just at it. Look at it. It's just sitting there. Look at that. What? <laughs> Holy smokes, man. What? It's kind of amazing that this window of opportunity is open for life to go beyond Earth. And we just don't know how long that window is going to be open. The thing that gets me most fired up is that creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. It would be so exciting to wake up in the morning and think that that's, that's what's happening. All right, kicking us off, rule number one, aim to solve big problems. You'd made some money from the sale of PayPal. You decided to build a space company. Why on earth would someone do that? Got that question a lot, that's true. <laughs> the people too, did you hear the joke about the guy who, who, who made a small fortune in the space industry and he you know, obviously started with a large one as the punchline. Um, and, and so I, I tell people, well, I was trying to figure out the fastest way to turn a large fortune into a small one. And they'd look at me like, oh, is he serious? <laughs> um, and strangely, you were. 
<laughs> so, 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 well, it, 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 what it, happened? It, it was a close call. I mean, things almost didn't work out. Things, we came very close to failure, but we, we managed to get through that point in 2008. The, uh, the goal of SpaceX is to try to advance rocket technology, and in particular to try to crack a problem that I think is vital for humanity to become a space-faring civilization, which is to have a, a, a rapidly and fully reusable rocket. Would humanity become a space-faring civilization? So, so that, that was a dream of yours in a way from a, from a young age, or like you, you dreamed of Mars and beyond? Um, I, I, made, I did build rockets when I was a kid, but I didn't think I'd be involved in this. It was really more, more from the standpoint of what are the things that need to happen in order for the future to be an exciting and inspiring one. And I, I, really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space ring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets. And I think that's really exciting. And compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until at some eventual extinction event. Musk decided that the only way to get an affordable rocket was to build it himself. And he started SpaceX. The odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Uh, w when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. How much of your personal fortune have you poured into this? A uh, hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars yes. into something that you did not believe would work at the beginning. Yes. Next up at number two is learn your craft. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You're self-taught? Yeah. Well, well self-taught, yes, meaning um, I, didn't, I don't have an aerospace degree. So how, how did you go about acquiring the knowledge? Well, uh, I, like I said, I read a lot of books, talked to a lot of people, and, and have a great team. Moving on to number three is never give up. Four years after starting, SpaceX rolled out its first rocket, an unmanned booster called the Falcon 1. Falcon has cleared the tower. But the first three test flights failed to reach orbit. Uh, we are hearing from the launch control center that there has been an anomaly on the vehicle. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in. Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. It turned out that the third failure was caused by a two-second glitch in the timing. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone on at that point? We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. This is a tricky business. Tricky. <laughs> yeah, the, with, yeah, I wish it wasn't so hard. Um. <laughs> Coming in at number four is innovate. So you've somehow slashed the cost of building a rocket by 75%, depending on how you calculate it. How on earth have you done that? NASA <laughs> has been doing this for years. How have you done this? Uh, well, we've made significant advances in, in the technology of the airframe, the engines, the electronics, um, and the launch operation. I mean, it, there's a, a long list of, of, of innovations that, that we've come up with there um, that they're a, a little difficult to communicate in, in this talk, but um, the... the <laughs> because, uh, not least because you could still get copied, right? By, I mean, you, you, you haven't patented this stuff. It's really interesting no, to me. You didn't patent don't because patent. The, you think it's more dangerous to patent than not to patent. I, it, since our primary competitors are national governments, um, the enforceability of patents is questionable. <laughs> the thing about rockets is that they're all expendable. All rockets that fly today are fully expendable. The space shuttle was an attempt at a reusable rocket, but even the main tank of the space shuttle was thrown away every time. And the parts that were reusable took a 10,000 person group uh, nine months to refurbish for flight. So the space shuttle ended up costing a billion dollars per flight. Obviously, that, that doesn't work very well for... So what, what, what just happened there? We just saw something <laughs> land? That's right. So 
it, it's important that the, the, the rocket stages be able to come back, to be able to return to the launch site and be ready to launch again within a matter of hours. Wow. Yeah. Reusable rocket. Yes. And, and so, what, so, the, so what a lot of people don't realize is the cost of the fuel of the propellant is, is very small. It's much like on a jet. So the cost of the, of the, of the propellant is about 0.3% of the cost of the rocket. So it's possible to achieve, let's say, roughly a hundredfold improvement in the cost of space flight if you can effectively reuse the rocket. Wow. That, that's why it's so important. Every mode of transport that we use, uh, whether it's planes, trains, automobiles, bikes, horses, is reusable, but not rockets. So we must solve this problem in order to become a space faring civilization. This is actually amazing when you think about it. You've never seen this before. A rocket blasting off and then... Yeah, so that rocket is about the size of a 12-story building. So now it's, it's hovering um, at about 40 meters. And it's, it's constantly adjusting the, the, the angle of the pitch and yaw of the main engine um, and maintaining roll with, with cold gas thrusters. How oh, cool is that? Next up at number five is ignore the critics. There are people who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. <laughs> How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> but, but when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. He's done it in partnership with NASA, which has given SpaceX technical advice and a contract worth up to $1.6 billion, mostly for 12 cargo flights to the space station. But SpaceX's lack of experience bothers some NASA legends like Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan. They've testified to Congress that the Obama administration's drive to commercialize space could compromise safety and eventually cost the taxpayers. Now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge to mediocrity. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that, um, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here, and, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes and to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in space flight and, and, and help make space flight accessible to, to almost anyone and I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. And finally, number six is create history. That's not a typo. <laughs> Although it is aspirational. Um, so we've, we've already started building the system. Um, the tooling uh, for the main tanks is, has been ordered. Uh, the facility is being built. We will start construction of the first ship um, around the second quarter of next year, so in about six to nine months. We should start building the first ship. I feel uh, fairly confident that we can complete the ship and be ready for a launch in about five years. Five years seems like a long time to me. Um, and um, I, the, the area under the curve of, of resources over that period of time should enable this time frame to be met. Um, but if not this time frame, I think pretty soon thereafter. Uh, but that's, that's, our, that's our goal, is to try to um, make the 2022 uh, Mars rendezvous um, 
Um, the uh, Earth-Mars synchronization happens roughly every two years. So every two years, there's a, an opportunity for um, to, to fly to Mars. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships, uh, two of which would be crewed, and two of which, two, two cargo and, and two, two crew. Um, the, the goal of, 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 the, uh, of these initial missions is to, is to find the best source of water. That's for the first mission. And then the second mission, the goal is to build the, the propellant plant. So we should, uh, with, particularly with six ships, there uh, have plenty of landed mass to construct the propellant depot, uh, which will consist of a large array of solar panels, very large array, um, and then everything necessary to mine and refine uh, water, and then draw the CO2 out of the atmosphere, uh, and then create and store uh, deep cryo CH4 and O2. Then build up the base, starting obviously with one, one ship, then multiple ships, then start building out the city, then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and, and, and over time, terraforming Mars and making it uh, really a nice place to be. Thanks. Come here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to know what did you take from this video that had the biggest impact on you that you're going to apply somehow in your life, your business. Leave it in the comments below. I'm really curious to find out. I also want to give a quick shout out to Practical Psychology. He picked up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and did a review on his YouTube channel, which recently passed 1 million subscribers. Congrats, man. Thank you for all the support. I'm so glad you enjoyed the book and I appreciate the review. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the book, Your One Word by Evan Carmichael. I'll teach you how you can increase your success by finding a single word that describes yourself. And I'll find mine in the process. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.